Hi there, this is Mr. Fred from GetMeCoding.com and let's jump into this tutorial on using a Dreamweaver library item. Adobe Dreamweaver offers a feature that makes your code reusable and it's known as a library item. Now, there are other ways to create reusable code if you're using a tool like Visual Studio or Visual Code or even some of the frameworks that are out there. But this is one that's really interesting to use because it keeps all of your assets centrally located right at your fingertips and it accelerates some of your page development. So let's just take a look to see how they're utilized. All right, I'm gonna come in here now and I'm gonna create a new HTML page and I'm gonna go ahead and select the Bootstrap framework here and I'm gonna go ahead and create new, but I'm gonna exclude and include, um, include a pre-built layout and I'm gonna click create. Now, one of the things that it says, you know, if you already are working with some, you can overwrite. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'm gonna come in here. All right, now I'm already in my page here and I could see that because I use Bootstrap, it's including some file references that are necessary for the Bootstrap uh, framework to be pulled in. Now, one thing to note is that when you do this, you're gonna see your source code tab and then you're gonna start to see the associated files. Now, I am currently working in a split code view. You could change it over to a full code view. You could change it over to a design view. Actually, I'm looking now at the, uh, the JavaScript for jQuery and I could change up these looks. If you're familiar with Dreamweaver, you could take a look at these. If you're not, take a look at the other prior videos that I have and that'll walk you through. What's real important though for a, this library item to work well is if it works within a site structure. So I'm gonna come in so I have my site location and I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm not gonna worry about uh, setting it up my FTP server. You could always add that in here and you could do so by clicking on the plus icon and then adding in your server settings and your credentials to log in. But going back to the site here, I'm happy with that and I'm gonna click save. Design view. And I'm gonna to start to build out my web page. The first thing I'm gonna do is make use of the bootstrap feature here pop over to the insert tab here and I could see all the bootstrap components that I have access to that I could just start dragging and dropping. Now down here in this lower panel, I do have my assets tab appearing here along with coding snippets, uh, the DOM structure. If I click on assets and scroll down through these icons here, you could see that there is one uh, item in here known as library. When I click on that, you could see that there's nothing in there currently because, well, we didn't create one. So whenever you do build your site, you will begin to build out your library um, items built upon assets that you create. So I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna save this file and I'll just call it, you know, index.html and I'm saving that inside of my, my folder. So now it's ready to go. Okay, there's a lot of ways you could add this in. I'm just gonna do a real quick one here where I'm gonna add a container. When I add that container here, it, it reminds me that bootstrap-based responsive web design in live view, you could see it there, right? And I'll say, okay. So it switched me over to the live view, which gives me a different perspective on what I'm building. If I wanna come in now, I could also then take a look at the split code view and I could see there's my code. And I have an area where I can insert possibly a navigation bar. Navigation bar is a great candidate to make a library item because you reuse it across all of your pages. And this is just one example of how you can make use of a library item. So I'm gonna come in there and I'm gonna just go ahead and I'm gonna add a navigation bar. So over here in my bootstrap components, I have my navigation bar. I'm gonna click on that and there it is. It dropped right into my code and then I have it. This is fully customizable. Uh, I could come in here, I could add uh, navigational items and so on. So that's a neat bit of code just dropped in with Bootstrap. All right, so now, what if you wanna make this your library item? First of all, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are in the design view, all right? When you change it, obviously things start to look a little bit different up here in your, uh, in your view, in your split view. If you wanna work there, you can work there by clicking on items more directly clicking on the whole item and it will highlight down in your code what it is. Once you've selected the item that you wanna turn into a library item, you can come up to here and you could say tools, library, add object to library. Now, once again, this option will only be available to you if you're in the design view for your code 
and this way you can add it right in. So I'm going to click on Add Object to Library, and it's going to prompt me with a few things here. It says this may not look the same, and it's just what, what it's doing here is it re it's reminding you that this was built on top of the um, Bootstrap Framework references, those links in your head section for CSS. So you have to make sure that those links appear on each page. I'm just going to click OK. Something has happened. A library item has been created, and I can give it a name, and I can call it whatever I want. I'm going to call it Navbar, and then save it. Now, once I do rename it, I get prompted with this window that says Update Files. This is the key to the library items, okay? When you build a library item, and you place it on individual pages, you can then go to the library item, make the change to the library item, and when you go to save it, it will then make the changes to all of your pages that are using that library item. And that's what's really cool about it. It's a really similar concept to possibly a CSS, an external CSS file or external JS file, a JavaScript file. But once again, what's really neat about this feature that's built right into Dreamweaver is it's all right here in your assets panel and, it, and you can make use of it. So I'm gonna say update and it typically goes and runs across all your pages, which I'll demonstrate here in a second. More importantly, now that I've converted it into a library item, when I go down in my code, because this library item exists within my site that I've defined, the code is right here and it's grayed out. Now, if you wanna edit it or change this library item code, what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna come down here and you could either open it, you could detach it, or you can recreate it. So if I click on open, you're going to see now that the library item opens up in a new tab and I can make changes to it right in here. One of the things that I am going to remove is this reference here, this meta tag. I'm going to remove that. And now when I'm ready, I can come up here and I will do a, a, a file save or a control S and I get that pop-up item. So everywhere that this library item is being used, it's going to be updated. So I'm going to click update. And then it'll start to tell me that, you know, where are we going to, you know, how are you going to update, whatever, wherever. And I'm going to click on show log here one second. This is a good thing to turn on because it'll give you a sense. So if you have 10 pages in your website, 50 pages in your website, 500 pages in your website, and you're making use of these library items, this will give you the run through so that you could see that it's updating everything that's in there. So I'll just say entire site and then click, click start. Files examined, updated. We didn't really add it to anything in here, so we'll then say close. All right, so that's the library item. I'm going to close it down for now. So inside of my um, my uh, my HTML file here, it looks like it needs to be saved, so I'm going to click save. All right, more importantly now, how would you add this into another page? So I'm going to go ahead and create new page. Here's my CSS. I'm going to use my existing, um, or I could say create new bootstrap reference. I'm going to click create. It's going to spawn open the, uh, the, the, the page, right? And there it is. It gives me that, that boiler template. There's the references to the bootstrap files. And then if I click into a spot in my code here or up in the, uh, the editor, I can make sure, first of all, I'm in design view because that's the, the, the stage you want to be in when you're dropping your, your file in. I can, come, I can do it a couple ways. I can select the item over here and I could right click on it and select insert and that'll drop it right in. Or I could drag and drop it into the space that I want to go to. I'm going to select insert, and there it goes. It popped right in there. Now, here's a couple of important things to note. Wherever you drop it in to your page, once again, you're going to notice that the code is grayed out or gray background. And then you're also going to notice a comment tag appearing here. And that'll indicate to you that it, that it relies on a library item. So everywhere in your site that you see that comment get dropped in there, that means it's a library item. That is a real easy way to do, you know, what you need to do with making reusable items. So now you can go back on to making, you know, your, your work uh, a little bit quicker. So one more time, over here in the assets panel, we start to see, we will start to then see the building out of our library items. And a library item really is nothing more than a collection of assets. In this particular case, the asset that we built was a nav bar. And that was an easy way. And now we can place it in all of our pages. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do one more page. We'll just do save. I'm gonna call that um, 
page two. And I'm also just going to create, I'm going to recreate another page real quick, and I'm just going to do save as, and I'm going to call it page three. Now, I just want to show you one more time what it looks like now. Now that we have that library item in there, I'm going to come over to my index page. But more importantly, I'm going to come over to my nav bar here, and I am going to open it up, and I'm going to select edit. It's going to open up the library item in the tab here. And say, for example, I wanted to change this word link to um, resources. Once I go, I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then I'm going to see the dialog pop up and it's telling me, update the library items in these files. I'm going to say, okay, go ahead and do it. Update it. I get the status. We're getting files examined. We're three files updated. We're three. And we are now good to go. It ran and did the update and I click close. So that is an easy way to make reusable components using Dreamweaver. Now you have a little bit more power at your fingertips.